Hi people of Earth, I'm Tom Jacobs. I'm on the web at tdjacobs.com and also healingsuicide.com. tdjacobs.com is my main site. And um, uh, when I prepare to do workshops or bigger events, I always am led through my own process, my own version of the process. So if I'm doing a, a you know, Pluto intensive or Pluto webinar, I'm always led through a process of dealing with my own Plutonian stuff. And it used to seem kind of like a burden, honestly, but now I understand it's to keep me alert to what it feels like to go through that process so I can, you know, develop and maintain even more presence and uh, also compassionate uh, awareness to be of service to the people who do the, who participate in the event. Because uh, I'm not just a teacher, I'm a counseling astrologer, I do energy work, I do help people transform their emotions and their thoughts and belief patterns. So I have to kind of go through my own process with it. So right now, um, I have been doing some um, St. Saint Germain work, healing, forgiveness, and heart opening stuff to work with grief. And um, on July 23rd, there's a, um, a St. Germain transmission, which is on resolving and releasing grief. I did one on May 6th, and then the audio is available. I'll put the links in the description to the, uh, the video. Uh, but basically, I, I was kind of bartering with my guides, and I was like, like negotiating, like, hey, if how do I get away from all this grief? If I started doing more Saint Germain work, would that help? <laughs> kind of like uh, bar negotiating, trying to like uh, make a deal so that I could le lessen or limit how much uh, grief I've been, uh, you know, going through, and and um. And, and it works. It works. So the answer from the guides was actually, this is through a student reading a few uh, weeks ago or a couple months ago, was, yeah, the more that you do that St. Germain work with people, the more you help others release their grief, a little of yours may go with may go with it. So I said, okay, great. So on July 23rd, check out the St. Germain transmission. And afterward, I believe the recording will be available, but I would love it if you could join live. July 23rd at, I think, 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, and then also the May 6th recording is available. So uh, they're both about 90 minutes and they're really heart opening, transformative things. So uh, what, what, what that's about is what, what St. Germain does is he's the keeper of the violet flame of forgiveness. So, but, but St. Germain doesn't bring the flame to you and forgive you. You're the point of power. You are the being who is the divine consciousness living the human life. So only you have the power to actually forgive or release or let go. So St. Germain brings this energy to you and gives you the opportunity essentially to confront how you're holding on to whatever it is that hurts. So it's really kind of an almost an all-purpose amazing thing. And I've even been recommending the transmission on grief to people who may not have grief as a primary issue they're dealing with, because just connecting with that being is so incredibly powerful. Okay, so, but the other thing I'm doing right now is um, recruiting for Beyond the Wound, a Chiron incubator. Could also be called a Chiron intensive, but I want to create an environment in which people feel nurtured, so I ca sometimes call these things incubators, kind of drop you in a warm little place with some fuzzy fuzzy things to cuddle with, and there's a little lamp that will help keep you warm, <laughs> and uh, kind of creating a communal community space where you get to learn, but also process through your own stuff in a gentle way. So anyway, so that begins, the materials release will be August 1st. There's some stuff to work with before we actually start working together. So August 1st is when the, the material is released that you get to, that you uh, study or work with or whatever. And also, um, depending on the order of sign up, meaning they might all be done by August 1st or not, but there's also 20 minute mini readings that are specific to each attendee. So everybody gets their own 20 minute mini reading of me blind reading their Chiron. So whether, you know, it would sound as if I've never met you, even if I have worked with you quite a lot, because I keep out everything we've talked about. I don't talk about anything we've talked about ever. So it's a blind read, and that is a lot that creates a library all attendees can access and learn through during the six weeks of group call calls or classes that go from August 15th to the end of September. 
So that's the kind of structure, the whole structure of the thing. And um, so there's personal learning, personal healing, and then people can have a, anybody can have uh, the option of uh, add-on readings at a discounted rate, at a deal rate during the, during the webinar, uh, during those, you know, six weeks of, of calls. And um, so uh, I'm really excited about it. So, so I'm doing the grief thing in general in my own process, and I'm also doing the St. Germain stuff and the Chiron stuff. And I will just say I'm, I'm 50 years old, and I'm in my Chiron return time. Um, I'm going to give you my birth date. If you want to look up my chart, you're free to, because I'm going to talk about some of the astrology of the Chiron return and um, just my own process with it. Uh, my birth date are November 8, 1972, uh, at 4.16 a.m. in Dover, Ohio, in the U.S. And... Um, that those data are on my site. My charts on my site. I don't. I don't hide my my chart because um, I was encouraged years ago by by spirit, essentially spirit guides to and Jehudi, they send a master I work with, who is also Saint Germain, to um, be transparent with some of my experiences so that people can understand uh, they're not alone in what they go through. Because the way I'm wired, I only teach what I have already gone through. So again, I do a workshop, I have to go through this experience before the workshop related to the themes of it. So I've been dealing with Chiron return stuff for a long time and I get it intellectually. And I'm always teaching people how to become for their inner ch children or inner child, the kind of parent they needed when they were a child. Because for me, the Chiron wound isn't the second wound where he wounds his thigh or leg or whatever as an adult. But his rejection by his the rejection by his mother at birth, because she didn't know he'd be a centaur. So my Chiron teaching starts in a completely different place, and is based in channel material about suffering and the point of pain and and how we can get beyond the wound and not be stuck in the in the what turns out to be, I believe, a false dichotomy between wounded and wounded healer. I think that has served us to a degree but when i started asking in 2008 what would happen in 2012 the answers from this ascended master hermes jehudi thoth saint germain were the answers were a teaching on chiron to upgrade our our understanding of energy and emotion and dealing with energy management and understanding the impact of emotion and how to transform through stuck places you know regarding emotion and energy how to become more conscious, and there are there's a there are very large implications for this, which you can see on the uh, 2012 Mayan calendar playlist on this on this channel that I started recording years ago. With my little little chub and little ball cap, I look like I'm about uh, eight years old, like ten years old. <laughs> anyway, those are the first videos I put up on YouTube were about the Mayan calendar stuff and these teachings about, uh, not necessarily about Chiron, but about the mountain calendar, what I was learning about it. We think there's this giant event that didn't happen, so we lost interest, but it is actually the perfection of certain things coming into place, which opens a door for human evolution. So check those videos out, um, the Mayan calendar or 2012 playlist on my channel. Uh, it's not outdated. Uh, it's, not, it's not old news. It's the beginning the end of the Mayan calendar marks the beginning of a long phase of human evolution for hundreds of years, if not longer. And we're just starting. We're just, whatever, a decade plus in. So um, so the Chiron thing, inner infant fearing rejection, rejection at birth. And, um, and I can trace this in anybody's chart and, uh, and tell them kind of what it looked like what this baby they were was doing and felt naturally or automatically unworthy of love or worthy of rejection. It's kind of a magical kind of a magical thing to put people in touch with their inner the inner children. Not the um I'm five and I'm unhappy or I'm six and I've been injured or I'm four and I've been traumatized, but the baby. The person in you who can't talk who doesn't have language yet, but feels everything, feels everybody's emotions, feels everything. So it's a really magical thing to unlock 
when I'm when I'm able when I'm able with clients with their permission to do that, and that's going to be a feature of the Chiron uh, work here in the incubator uh, beyond the wound, and so um, that magic because you can't process through the real Chiron wound, the the rejection at infancy or rejection in infancy or rejection at birth, you can't process through that intellectually because this baby can't think straight and has no language. It's a baby. It's a newborn. So to to get into the emotional space with that is the point, is the key to all of it. So um, I became aware during the Saturn workshop I did a few months ago, uh, I became aware that I actually, my whole life, have con I've sat in retrograde. And one of the things that, that, that can indicate is uh, a distant relationship with fathers or father figures, father, father figures, and mentors, and and um, authority figures, and stuff like that. And I certainly have a lifetime full of that. And I was thinking that whole time during this thing, I had all these memories of music teachers, trombone teachers, music teachers, some of whom were very clearly mentors and things were very supportive, and some of whom it just didn't work it just didn't con connect um and primarily it was the men i had trouble connecting with and of course that points toward the father of course and um and then i was also thinking about certain family relationships and and my anyway it started to bring up my own my own dad stuff which i've done a ton of work on but during the chiron return around age 50 a door is open where that inner infant is on the surface more a door is open to that so so it all kind of culminated yesterday. So sort of during the Saturn thing, I became aware of that mentor father figure thing through the form of trombone teachers. And then uh, when I was a teenager and in my 20s, and then I became, and all these missed opportunities and missed connections and weird miscommunications and all these things, and then I became really kind of aware of how I've been compensating for my own um, distant father, so to speak. He seemed to me indifferent. But he was emotionally unavailable, is kind of how to, how to think of it. Um, he was carrying his own grief. I don't think he really wanted kids. Uh, my mom said she talked him into it. They had had a, a, their first child had died shortly after infancy, and it destroyed him, and it destroyed her. But then she said she convinced him to have two more. And here's, I'm the second of those two more. My sister is a, a couple years older. So unprocessed grief was something that he was already dealing with. And so he was kind of unavailable to me. And so he seemed indifferent and unavailable. And uh, we grew up near him. My parents were divorced before I was three, but we grew up near him. But like he wasn't, and he was there, but he wasn't an active participant in a certain way. So anyway, I was always craving that validation. Saturn retrograde, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, which I couldn't get. So this all culminates the other day in realizing I compensated my whole life with kind of being a kind of man or an adult that I, th this is Saturn retrograde, that I think is going to work, but I haven't had good models. And I was like, oh my God. And that brought up a connection with that inner kid, which was even deeper, culminating yesterday sitting in my car and in the parking lot outside the grocery store, realizing that this part of me feels lost. And I was like, oh my God. And I called my girlfriend and I was like, uh, I'm outside the grocery store and oh my God, I just want someone to adopt me. And <laughs> just, oh my God, I don't know, you know, just feeling absolutely lost and wanting a healthy male figure to adopt me. And I was like, oh my God, wow, crazy. So anyway, so getting into that kid, the vulnerability of that infant feeling untethered. And I, I said to my girlfriend, oh my God, I'm going to have to f do research and figure this out. I don't know how I'm ever going to come out of this. But, right? but I was in that moment and the baby and I were joined. So I didn't know because the baby was there, right? The baby doesn't know. So I would have my vocabulary and my arti m me articulating, but I didn't know. And so then I realized before I did this video, I was like, I kind of want to do a video. I wonder what I'm going to do a video on. And I realized, aha, yeah, it, one of the keys to my Chiron teaching is becoming the kind of parent you wish you had or becoming 
the kind of parental influence on your inner kid that you need it. So um, I often have people make a list of what they wish their family could have been or done for them. Parents or family or, you know, could be one parent or both parents or family in general. Uh, because in most people, until they kind of go through a transformational heart opening process and kind of this kid gets supported and met and the transformation occurs, most people have an inner kid waiting for someone to love them in the right way. So what I'm offering in this Chiron work, and of course I'm, I'm like finally having a moment of clarity after days of, oh, the other detail was uh, I've been doing a bunch of like supplements for health issues and whatever and taking animal organs and all kinds of stuff to support different things. And uh, I learned through my girlfriend who's been, been on that kind of path for a while. Um, sometimes it can like mess with your sleep and kind of you have healing reactions where you feel sick or something. And what I had like several days ago, I had, um, I was kind of uh, shaking as if I was cold. Like, like my whole body kind of, you know, like, like tremoring, you know? And I was like, but I'm not cold. So that was weird. So I turned the heat up. So it was like, it was like 80 degrees outside, 82 degrees outside. And I'm um, quaking, right? And then I was like, whoa. And then I kind of did feel cold. It was the inner kid feeling alone. Because it was, the temperature was not, I wasn't having, I wasn't sick. I wasn't getting the flu or whatever. But I was like feeling the vulnerability of the baby who can't speak. I was just feeling the fear and the loneliness. And I was shaking as if I was cold. Anyway, that was amazing. And then I put, and then I thought, well, maybe I am getting sick or maybe it's these supplements or whatever. And because uh, there was one that I transitioned to where it's like, you know, it says take six of these things a day and from this other version and whatever. And my girlfriend was like, you know, I hear this one is extremely powerful. So that might really kind of mess you up in the short term. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just start with one. And I did that for like a week or 10 days. And then I went up to two and it was a few days into that, that this happened. So I thought, well, maybe that's, maybe that's it. But no, it's the inner kid because wearing a jacket in my car in the parking lot yesterday, at the grocery store, I was like shaking too. So, the kid is here, the contact is here. So I don't need to do research actually, because I actually know the answer, but when the baby's on the surface, I don't remember what I, the wisdom that I've gained, right, that I've learned. Um, I have to be for myself the kind of adult I wish I had. So I have to make a list. And for the first time in my life, I have to actually do this particular thing I share with clients constantly, but I'm in the middle of this you know, no man's land where this kid is like, I don't know what's going to happen next. You know, this kid is like, ah, you know, just afraid and alone. And um, anyway, I'm smiling about it because I'm having compassion about it. But uh, it's definitely been a bit confusing. And I, and I thought I, I don't know how to heal this. And that was the first time with an emotional thing in these last 20 years where I didn't know what I was going to do or where an answer might come from. It was already inside me, but, but it's had to get some perspective and ground that kid a little bit. So, um, you know, overcoming these fears of not being loved or these perhaps very real experiences of having been rejected or not accepted by family when you were young, this particular chironic unique thing about you, which is maybe your empathic nature, maybe your intuitive self, maybe having um, not so clean energetic boundaries and absorbing others' emotions. I did absorb my dad's grief for a while, for, I mean, for a couple decades almost, um, until I was in my 20s and I was like, wait a minute, this isn't mine. Uh, I have my own stuff to deal with. But um, so that's the kind of, that's kind of what I'm offering in the incubator of Beyond the Wound, a Chiron Incubator. So I hope that you will check it out on tdjacobs.com. The links to all these things will be in the, the description of the video. And um, I'm really looking forward to um, facilitating these calls and answering your questions and doing Chiron mini readings for you so you can um, you know, learn with and from each other and process through your own stuff. And, and the last thing I'll say about this is, this is part of a teaching, this idea of like, 
what's going to happen in 2012 and and Hermes gives me all this info on this teaching that turns into this Chiron teaching and astrology and this emotional processing stuff. Um, human sensitivity, getting out of the brain into the body and the heart and processing what's stored there. Human sensitivity is the key to evolution. Our vulnerability, our compassionate awareness, our heart opening is the key to, to human evolution right now. Right. I said five or six times what's going to happen in 2012. And the answers all had to do with this new version of energetic and emotional awareness and sensitivity. So I just want to say that uh, vulnerability isn't weakness. Sensitivity isn't weakness. And so a lot of what we're going to do in the Chiron Incubator, as you kind of like are in this kind of warm space with whatever you're cuddling up with in this in this uh, gentle space, has to do with validating your emotional awareness that maybe nobody else has ever seen or you thought was a weakness or a defect or a handicap and i'm going to teach you how to be aware of it and validate it and use it and heal the inner kid stuff so no part of you is waiting to be loved so no part of you is afraid love isn't coming from anywhere because it hasn't been there yet now, as I said, I'm around, fi I'm around 50 years old, and so the door is open around the Chiron return time. Um, but this can happen through all kinds of different transits of Chiron to our natal chart or transits uh, to your own Chiron of anything else, this kind of sensitivity, right? But for most of us, it's a lifelong thing where maybe it's not set off by transit or the Chiron return. For most of us, the need is to come in and validate ourselves in this way because it's been outstanding. It's been hanging in the air, right? It, it's like a, a dangling participle or something. It's like hanging in the air. An unfinished question even, you know. Uh, so we're going to work on that. And I'd love to help facilitate a healing process for you wherein you become the kind of uh, parent for your inner children that um, that you wish you had, that, that you needed, so you're not waiting for love. So no part of you is waiting for validation. So check all that out through tdjacobs.com, and uh, thanks for your attention and time and energy. And uh, also remember the St. Germain transmission on July 23rd and the recording of it later and the May 6th event now. Okay, take care.